All right, all right, Knights of Apollo, what is up, guys? Hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another Rome 2 Siege Battle. This is the continuation of the TWL Siege Tournament Season 8. Game 2 between the Crimson Chickens and the Gorilla Boys. If you missed the first battle, be sure to watch that first so you can get the correct context of what's going on. Also, I have all the battles of Group C in a playlist, so you can watch all the battles of Group C. Also, guys, there's other YouTubers that are going to be covering the other group's tournaments. So that they're all linked down in the video description. There's also a link to the Discord where the tournament is being organized. So you can, you know, follow your favorite teams more cl uh, closely or even join in the next season tournament. So definitely check that out. Uh, so yeah, if you watched uh, the the first game, uh, the Crimson Chickens, my team, was defeated by the Gorilla Boys pretty handily. Uh, pretty decisively. It wasn't ever like really back and forth. They kind of controlled that game the whole time. So now we're going to be on defense and they're going to be on attack. Now, if we look at these factions really quick, uh, so uh, the Gorilla Boys, they are actually bringing a really good mix of factions here. Or, or, yeah, factions here. He's bringing Navatia and Pergamon. Both these factions are worth negative one point. So that means they will only gain one point if they win because you get three points for attacking. So, uh, yeah, that's, I mean, that's a pretty, pretty nasty combo. These are some good factions and uh, they won't get a ton of points from this. So, I, I, in a sense, I, I, I respect the respect for us. Uh, we spoke to them after the battle and the reason they, they brought Pergamon is because they, they have a lot of projectiles. They have a lot of the... Uh, the these spears they're basically like thorough spears and they can thorough spears is the ultimate anti-cav and they brought a ton of it because they're afraid of ruvex uh, sally out so we didn't do a sally out because we expected them to expect it uh so yeah it was it was i don't know it's it was uh it was cool it was cool anyways on the fence the crimson chickens uh we got the armenians who are plus one and then i'm i'm bringing nervii which is a plus two faction. And together, if we win, we'll get uh, five points. Five points total. So that would be a huge help, a huge chunk. And that would put us back into second place if we could pull out a victory here. But it's going to be tough um, because the Gorilla Boys, they've got better factions points-wise. And they're honestly a better team. The players are just skilled. They're, 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 uh, they're really good players. So... It's going to be a tough fight. Anyways, uh, they've broken down a breach. Um, Ruvak has sent up some hillmen to kind of harass the enemy here. Uh, in for unfortunately, you can't really control where the Pila go. But I think he was trying to get the Pila to throw down on these picked Peltis. Because this is a good unit if you could kill them. But unfortunately, they decide to throw at the Siege Tower. Which gets him nothing. And he's like, ah, never mind. I'm not going to bother doing this. Yeah, so, um, yeah, uh, the, uh, the, the strategy here for us, personally, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> sorry, my breakfast is coming up, <clears throat> that was really embarrassing, personally, um, personally, <laughs> personally, we're trying to, um, not skirmish with the enemy, so our strategy here is our, we believe that our infantry is better in close combat. So we're trying to get our infantry into the fight as quick as possible and um, not let them establish any kind of foothold and skirmish us down. That's essentially because keep in mind, Nabatea has fantastic archers and Pergamon has a lot of these javi throwing spears. So if we sit back and let them form up and, and get into some really good positions, it's going to be disaster for us. It's going to be a nasty, nasty disaster. Because they're just going to skirmish us to death. So we got to get our infantry into the fight. What the heck was that? Did you see that? Oh, I think it was... Yeah, what the heck? Look at this. A torch. Making it all the way over here. What the heck? That's a funny glitch. Hold on, let's see if that happens again. Oh, no, they burned it down. Yeah, so they're burning down the tower. That's a pretty smart move. They don't have to worry about it. That was funny. That was so funny. And notice the difference between... This is something you can learn here between the Crimson Chickens and the Gorilla Boys. And I can say this because the Crimson Chickens is my team. But notice 
how different their approach is to the siege battle, how patient they're being, how strategic they're being. You know, they're doing little things here and there to give them slight edges. And that's something to, you know, take in and learn about. Something you can learn from where we kind of just went in and went for it. Um, I think there is there is a sense of, like, pressure when you're the attacker because you are timed. You only have an hour. But this settlement usually never lasts an hour. This, set, this settlement is a very fast settlement. Oof. Now they're hitting us with artillery. Uh, but yeah, you just got to take your time and, and take every tiny edge that you can get. Because these battles are so competitive, they're so close, and the players are so good that you can't ever, like, just go through the motions. You got to try to take as many advantages as possible to try to come out on top. And that's what they did here. They destroyed the tower. Sure, they could have captured the tower and used it against us, but I, it really doesn't matter because it's... It's probably better that they just destroy it because if we move in and try to fight for it, you know, they could lose more than, than they kill of us. So, I don't know. I just like that play. And those towers are so easy to destroy for these barbarian settlements. It's just, you know, it's no big deal. Now, I do have a unit over here of Vanguard troops. I got some guerrilla swordsmen. I'm just, I'm just kind of putting them out here as a potential opportunity. I, you know, I always thought, you know, if nothing happens out of this, I can just retreat, go back in here, and use this, uh, this unit kind of normally as a normal infantry. But if I do see an opportunity, I can easily move them up and uh, try to get a surprise, like, rear charge or, or something like that. So right now, they're just um, trying to destroy this, this wall. And I'm sure they're going to be out of ammo quick here. I'm just going to go and fast forward since it's a little bit of a slower pace. This was this was the case for us as well. We really wanted to destroy this wall as much as possible. But it's going to be tough uh, because of Pergamon. Pergamon, their skirmishing capability is going to make this defense so difficult. Because Nervii, I'm playing as Nervii, and they don't have great armor. So they don't really have... They don't really have the... Um, the capability to absorb ammo like other factions so it's going to be extremely difficult to kind of deal with pergamon which is just like a walking porcupine that shoots it's like you know it's needles I, I mean that's what it feels like the porcupine faction that just can i don't know just shoot out needles and i don't know is it are porcupines even capable of shooting out the needles I, I, don't, I don't know if I've seen that in a cartoon or something. I know that if you land on it, it probably hurt like hell. But anyways, doesn't matter. Um, I'm still going to go with the porcupine analogy. Anyways, they basically can just kill you from a short distance. You know, not super up close from a distance. And the problem here is that even if we push up and defend this initial defense, he's going to have skirmishers hitting us to hell. You know, it's going to be a major problem. So we're kind of like, we're like stuck here. We're, we're not sure what to do. And here we go. Here comes the first push by Pergamon. They're inside the city. We got spears. We got Glacian swords. Very good unit. Not as good as Glacian legionaries, but still nonetheless pretty good for their, for their price. And then we have Nabatea kind of setting up some, some towers here. So they're pushing up and guess what they're gonna do here with the uh, desert levy yep that's right they're gonna burn down the towers again another smart move here they could even burn down the gate as well if they wanted to so yeah they're gonna get up there burn down the towers glacian swords some spears still not engaging they're just taking their time they're just taking their time. Why not? Why not? Now, he does have a scorpion as well, the attackers, which is already going... Already has 148 kills. Hold on, what is... Oh, yeah, that's right. See, so are they going for... They might be going for these axemen. Wow. Look at that. Yeah, the scorpion is the silent killer, and I learned that in this match. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because it's not big. They're small. It's easy to miss. 
and it can it just it can rack up a lot of kills if you're not paying attention and also like the landing effect is not as as visible and there we go he's pushing what is he shooting at now what is he going for no way is he really reaching these fear swords yeah wow that's impressive I didn't know the scorpion had such reach. This is talking... I mean, we're talking about sniper mode right here. This is insane. I didn't even... I didn't even know this was happening. I mean, I knew, it, I knew it happened at the end of the battle. But I didn't know it happened like this. Because I didn't even really see this. I was completely blind to it. But yeah, what a use of the scorpions. Utterly crushing my fierce swords. Not even paying attention. I'm just sitting there. I don't even realize, guys, because I'm so focused on this side of the battle. I don't... And, and again, it's the silent killer. And it's so useful. Scorpions are so useful in these types of settlements because the walls aren't that high. And you can do stuff with a scorpion like this. That's good to know. That's good to know. I mean, honestly, I thought my troops... I mean, ah. That sucks. That sucks. Look at that. Anyways, over here, we kind of sallied out to kind of get these guys by surprise. I got my Gorilla Swordsman. And, um, yeah, we do get some good hits here on the backs, but they're just, they're desert levy. It's not that huge of a win. And I just kind of run up, get some hits, run back. I'm just doing whatever I can to get some kills there. And here we go. We got our first fight, and, oh... Ruvax Hillman getting hit here. There we go. He's charging in with the Glacian Swords. And guys, things are about to get pretty spicy. I don't know. It's a tough situation here. A very tough situation because the mindset originally was like, hey, let's, let's plug the gap right here. Give them nothing. But then at the same time, if we do that, they're going to hit us to hell with uh, skirmishers. But I feel like if we let them in, they're also going to hit us to hell with skirmishers it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be awful um so we're we're kind of in between a rock and a hard place in this situation and we're just we're just kind of you know at this point we're just kind of dipping our toes in the water and seeing what we can do here and, and how the how the enemy is going to react how the gorilla boys are going to react and so far they're 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 doing just fine they don't need to react they're just over here uh, on a sniping spree <laughs> oh my gosh how many kills does this thing have? 219. Oh my gosh. It's a it's just an amazing shot. It's an amazing shot. It's a, it's funny how it it exit the, the the shot exits the uh the ballista or the scorpion. It just looks goofy, but yeah, that's tragic, dude. They're just standing over their dead brothers. That's tragic. They're like, is the god commander going to move us or what? <laughs> Celtic warriors uh, lining up here. I'm getting ready to hold. I'm like, all right, this is it. I wanted to line up here so I could throw. There we go. I get a toss off and now we're in the, now we're in the thick of it. And basically at this point, we decided to make three stands. Here, here, and here. That's going to be our, our defense because we're just trying to avoid as much skirmish fire as possible. I'm trying to set up some nice javy throwing positions. That's why I've sent up my my Celtic Warriors. I, again, my goal here is try to, is try to use as much ammo as possible before throwing in the infantry. Sometimes you don't have that luxury, and sometimes you excuse me you have to use the uh, the infantry like right away. There we go, nice. Just just killing them, killing them, baby. And see, that's what he's doing here. Look at this is he's gonna do this all game. He's going to set up these little gaps. He's going to move up his spears. Look at this. This is so good by the Gorilla Boys. So good. And look at all that. All that hate coming down from above. Nice. Nice little throw there from Ruvac. But we kind of have to go in here because if we stand here, we're sitting ducks. And that's our, that's our goal. Like, go in and charge. And look at... He's got... On top of the... The spears. He also has Peltis. And there we have it, guys. And I'm charging out over here as well. Trying to silence these swordsmen. I'm just trying to silence. 
It's like, I kind of know I'm going to lose, lose this engagement, but I can't just let this unit sit there and javi us to death. Uh, back over here, Rubek does have some cav looking for an opportunity, but nothing has, has, has shown yet. And nice, Ruvak's winning the fight over here. This is very good against these picked uh, Peltis, but he's going to reinforce them with some Galatian swords. And that's probably going to turn the tide here pretty quickly in that specific engagement. Now I've got uh, more units pushing forward, some Celtic warriors. I'm curious, is he still shooting at my swords? I don't think so. I think he's out of ammo. But I, I should be good. Oh my god, dude. How did I not see this, too? Honestly, you know what it was? I was probably just so focused over here. I just clicked on the unit. I didn't even look at him. So I didn't even see the carnage initially when I was playing this battle. And they've got to be out of ammo. They have to be. Yeah, they are. With how many kills total? 229. Oh, my gosh. That's awesome. Really done. Really great uh, job with the, um, the scorpion. Now we got some archers moving up. Um, we've got... Well, Ruvak's got some pretty good archers. No, actually... I, get the, I don't know. I think they... I think we outnumber them with archers, but their quality of archers is better. And there we go. We're just kind of losing, guys. I mean, we're losing the fight over here. I'm trying to get my men into position so they can throw some jabbies. And he's he knows that too well, and he's going to charge forward. Oh, shields up. They didn't that didn't kill anybody there. Dang, dude. That sucks. That sucks. There I got more infantry moving forward. Fierce swords coming in. My depleted fierce swords that have been shot to hell. I'm going through the gap because I'm trying to silence the Javis. And look at now he's gonna shoot me with archers. Or no, these are Peltis. Look at that. Look at that, man! He's just throwing over the walls. That is perfect. And he's getting the flank of my... That It's just like... Everything we did here... Just did not work. You know, it's just everything... They had a counter. Every move we made, they had a counter. Look at that use of the javies there. Some of them are missing, but it doesn't matter. Most, most of them are making it. Here comes another unit of fierce swords. I'm just trying to overwhelm them with numbers here a little bit. And look at that bounce of power. It's already looking terrible. Already looking terrible. The Axeman getting into position. And I still have a I still have my oath sworn. I've got my own ballista that has 50 kills. So my ballista is doing some work here. Uh, I'm mostly going for I think I'm going for the hoplites. No, I'm not going for them. I'm going for someone. Maybe the general. I think the general was in range. I don't remember. I don't know. I don't I was hitting somebody. I mean I got 50 kills. All right, now we got archers running in. Like, you know, you know, we're like, how many minutes? Like, 18 minutes into this battle, and we got archers running in already? Like, oh, yikes. And here comes the uh, the archers opening. Oh, no, these are the Peltis. I keep forgetting. That's so great. I, honestly, I feel like we should have fallen back more. You know, I don't I don't know. I, I don't know. Because, like, maybe we would have gotten better high ground here. Would have made it a little bit more difficult if we just kind of held, like, right here. Because being by the walls makes it so they have a kind of defensive position, but still being able to fire their their ammo with their peltis. Here we go. We're breaking a unit. Let's go. Let's go. All right, there we go. Nice. And then he's going to flank me, though, with hoplites. Over here, we're holding back many enemies with multiple units. Trying to get these men in position to throw some jabbies. But it's just not working out. Now we're trying to get something creative here done. Because uh, Ruvak's got to get his cab involved. But Ruvak's not having a lot of luck here. This unit has 24 kills. And it's broken. Uh, this is a pretty expensive cab, if I'm not mistaken. And for them to only get 24 kills, that's not good. But it's tough. It's just we can't find an opportunity. They're doing a great job of of just protecting their flanks. And there we go. I'm completely out of ammo with this Gorilla Swordsman unit. And uh, we're, we're having to fall back here. I'm using my archers. 
Oh, jeez. Look at this guy. Spear through the chest, dude. Oh, my gosh. Here we go. I got to run up some reinforcements to try to protect my archers because that's literally all we have. My general is now going into the fight because that's all we have. Look at the carnage. And these picked pel peltus. This carnage. They evaporated my fierce swords. And then I'm sending everything I got. I got Old Sworn over here. I mean, it's looking. I mean, is it possible we could win? Yeah. Is it likely? No. But you never know. You never know, guys. Am I saying that so you watch that till the end of the video? Maybe. But you can continue to watch the Gorilla Boys out maneuver us and learn something from them. Oh, nice, nice little volley. I'm just trying to get some volley. I'm trying to not engage in a fight because I want to use, I want to exhaust all of my ammo. I got to turn around, turn around, turn around. I'm going to keep throwing volleys at me. Volleys of spears. There it is. Getting back into position. It's just, it's so many projectiles coming in. So many projectiles. Oh my gosh, dude. I'm like, screw it. I got to charge in because I'm a dead man if I just sit here. Oh, look at my unit. All those spears in their shields. And then even if I charge in, it doesn't stop. Make it stop. Make it stop. So I still got my Scorpion here. It's got 66 kills. You know, it's something. I think I'm going for like this big blob of uh, infantry. Oh my gosh, dude. Not the bees. Like, look at this. I have nightmares of Pergamon. Nightmares of from Pergamon. No other faction has terrified me as much as Pergamon. Never thought it would be Pergamon. It's just insane, man. It's insane. So, yeah, a tough fight. A very tough fight. And there we go. Some more spear throwing over here. Oof. My general, I don't know how he's still alive, honestly. Down to 35 men. He's gotten how many kills? 21. That's pathetic for Oathsworn. Just pathetic. Here, I try to I try to use a little flanking maneuver. I get on the wall. Because basically I'm trying to uh, get around and fight. Silence these guys. Yeah, it doesn't matter. This Gorilla Swordsman unit, they're already losing decisively. Yep, there they go. They're breaking. We barely got anything holding this center position. They're getting hit by archers, hit by javies. Woo! We've fallen over on this side. My archers, I'm falling them back. These archers have 121 kills. They're actually not doing too bad. But I'm basically just trying to delay the inevi inevitable now at this point i'm just trying to get kills so it doesn't look as bad on the stats you know so i don't have like 500 kills you know i try to get at least a thousand kills try at least there we go and then i'm gonna charge in one more time nice and then i got archers firing at the flank or at least they're about to fire on the flank. Fire! Still holding the center, but barely. At this point, you got to believe that the Gorilla Boys are just on autopilot mode. Just like going through the motions. Like, let's just finish this battle up. Yeah, there they go. They're just going to charge everyone in. Charge everyone in. And uh, I retreat my Oath Sworn because they're about to be flanked. And once they get flanked, these guys' backs are turned to my archers. So I'm going to open fire on those guys. 
My archers are starting to break, though. They got a 140... 50, 150 kills. Let's go. Yeah. So there you have it, guys. Down in the last couple seconds. We are defeated by the Gorilla Boys completely. Um, You know, it's not... Honestly, it's not... I'm not trying to, like, cope here or anything. But it, it really isn't a huge deal. Because the, we know the Gorilla Boys are going to be unstoppable. They're already in the playoffs at this point, you know. Uh, they have, like, 24 points or something. Where the, the closest person in second place has, like, 8 points. Um, so, really, it's going to... If this was any other team in our group, this would be a, a disastrous defeat. Um, but, it, you know, I've learned a lot from this battle. And... We did select factions that we didn't really care about. And again, this is not a cope by any means. We were trying to win. I want to make that completely, you know, I, I'm not I'm not saying we weren't trying to get a win here. We absolutely were trying to get a victory here. In fact, so much so that uh, Ruvak was actually going to play as one of the horse factions. Thank God he didn't because he would have been... I mean, it doesn't really matter. We got crushed either way, but he would have, you know, he wouldn't have had a lot of success against this this army selection here. Uh, so, um, yeah, you know, we we changed up our strat here because we did want to try to get a victory, but with factions we didn't really care about. Because why? Seriously, think about it this way: the Gorilla Boys, they're very good. Okay, so if we selected factions that we love. Only to lose to the Gorilla Boys or have a battle that's a little bit closer, but yet we still lose. It wouldn't make sense because the Gorilla Boys, they're already in the tournament. And we don't need, per, per se, to defeat the Gorilla Boys to get into the tournament. Because it seems like everyone in our group is, is losing from the Gorilla Boys. So I think the Gorilla Boys has one more matchup. And it's against the Wolf, the wolf, uh, wolf Gang. So... Um, if they can, I mean, if Wolfgang beats them, that's a problem because we beat the Wolfgang and, uh, you know, we, it, it's all, it's really comes down to just points. So we'll see. Um, uh, but I will know for, for like now on the battles after this are a must win. They're all must wins. We have to beat every other team except the Gorilla Boys. Um, so yeah, anyways, GG to the Gorilla Boys. They did absolutely amazing. Uh, I look at that. I did get at least a thousand kills. So let's go. Um, <laughs> yeah. So really good job with Pergamon. Really impressive use of those spears. Um, that was pretty fun to see. And this the scorpion man. That's that just got a ton. Oh wow, they only got one kill with the uh, with the artillery. Interesting. But yeah, you can see that they kind of dominated dominated us here again. But that's okay. I, I, personally, I hate that settlement. And the tragic thing is that we have to play that settlement twice. Uh, we just got unlucky there. Because every team has to play a certain settlement twice. Because of the five team setup. So we have to play that one again. Um, so we might have to change up our strategy here. Or, or mix it up or something. Uh, but yeah, that was a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this one. Um, um, the Gorilla Boys. There's something else. Uh, they're a really good team. And uh, they, they are. Keep in mind. They are looking for revenge for losing in the finale of the last season. Uh, but we'll see uh, how they go, uh, how far they go this season. We'll see if, hey, when you if you can get into the playoffs, the di the dynamics change a lot because people stop worrying about points as much and they start going for wins. Uh, points still matter in the playoffs, but a lot of times people are picking factions that are negative points. So it's like whoever gets the least amount of negative points wins, you know, essentially. But anyways, guys, I don't want to keep rambling here. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this battle. And um, I don't know who we have for the next matchup. Um, it might be a while uh, for the next matchup because I think the Gorilla Boys have just been super like, hey, let's get our matches done really fast because you, I think you have to play one match per week. And uh, we're kind of a little bit ahead of the game. Like a lot of teams have just played their matches a little bit faster in our groups. So uh, there might be a little bit of a uh, a little bit of a wait until the next matchup. I could be wrong, but yeah. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time on the battlefield.